the majority of people who try to give up an addiction will fail because most individuals will relapse within the first couple of days of quitting. It often takes repeated relapse for an individual to break free of their addiction. And trust me when I say that not a lot of people will get to that point. There are a number of reasons why people lose their focus with their intention into ending their uh, substance abuse. Now, what are, those, what are those reasons and what is the solution to breaking your addiction or overcoming your addiction? The only solution to that is to deal with it. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our show, Deal With It, with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. Now, the show is dedicated towards analyzing and discussing some of the most controversial topics out there that affect our lives on a daily basis, whether in a negative or in a positive way. Throughout the show, you will be able uh, to comment because we are live on Facebook and to call. Four, we are joined with Sayyid Hussain Qazwini who will talk about overcoming addictions and to answer whatever question you have. Sayyidna, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Allah Very inshallah. well. I'm very excited to see what kind of addictions uh, we need to overcome. Yes. Or are we addicted to something? But before we do that, let's kick it off with our quick ziyara. Absolutely. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين والسلام على أخيه أبي الفضل العباس قمر العشيرة وباب الحوائج السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته Again, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome back to our show. Deal with it with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. Uh, now, as I mentioned, this show is dedicated towards analyzing and discussing some of those controversial topics that affect our daily lives on uh, our, our lives on a daily basis, uh, whether uh, either negative or positive. We are live on Facebook and YouTube, uh, so you can visit Imam Hussein 3 TV on both uh, social media networks. YouTube and Facebook to leave uh, your questions and your comments on there for they will be answered by Sayyid Hussain Al Qazwini. Now, Sayyidna, today we chosen to talk about a topic uh, that really does affect our life uh, very negatively, uh, but some positively, I don't know what. Uh, addiction. Now, the aspect of addiction is. is skyrocketing especially in the 21st century and we did talk about social media in the first episode and people are addicted to social media now is it possible for someone to overcome addiction a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin bari al-khalaq ajma'in ba'ath al-anbiya wal mursalin thumma salatu wa salamu ala khairi khilqihi muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin the answer to your question is yes, of course. Uh, it is possible to overcome an addiction. And proof of that is that many people who were addicted to certain things were able to come overcome those addictions. Maybe some 
were not able, but others were. And all it takes is one person to be ob able to overcome an addiction. That is proof that it is possible. Yes. But first of all, um, let's talk about how addictions work. Because it's psychological. Yes. And it's, it's scientific it as well. Of course, I don't, I don't claim to be uh, a professional in this field. I don't claim to, to be an expert on, on how addictions work psychologically and scientifically. However, what I know is this. My basic understanding mm -hmm. of the scientific way of how addictions work is this. You try something and you enjoy it. When you enjoy it, the brain registers that. Registers that after this experience, there were feelings of pleasure. Mm -hmm. Correct? There were feelings of pleasure, of, of pleasure. When you try it again, whatever it is, and we'll, we'll talk about the examples. Yes. You try that activity again, and again there is pleasure. It gets registered in the brain that I did this once and twice, and both times there was pleasure. The brain forms an association between that behavior and pleasure, a good feeling. So whenever the brain remembers that behavior again, he associates it with pleasure. He remembers that that act, that behavior, brought him pleasure. Mm -hmm. He craves it. So basically, it's, it's uh, psychological, everything about it. It's psychological, absolutely. The brain works through association. We form associations. So, let's say drugs. Mm -hmm. Someone does drugs. There was a pleasure in it. Mm -hmm. The brain registered that once the person tried this substance and had pleasure. He does it again. Same reaction. Again, there was pleasure. Maybe a third time. It gets registered that this substance is associated with pleasure. Whenever you remember it, whenever your brain remembers that activity, it will, all, it will remember that it was pleasurable. The body begins to crave it. The body wants that experience once again. So as soon as you remember that act, your brain says pleasure. It brought you pleasure. You begin craving it again. That is why those who try drugs, if they do it once or twice or three times, they usually can continue doing it. Mm -hmm. And that is why drugs are addictive. Drug. I'm sorry? I think it depends on the drug. It depends on the drug. Yeah. But that's why drugs are addictive. Yeah. Cigarettes as well, smoking cigarettes. It's enjoyable once, twice. maybe for some it's not enjoyable. Mm -hmm. For some it is. The brain forms an, an association between that behavior and the pleasure. Yes. And rem whenever it remembers that behavior, it feels a taste of that pleasure. Mm -hmm. So it craves it. So it wants it mm -hmm. again and again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people ask this is that um, why are cigarettes addictive? Do they have drugs in it? Because nicotine, is it considered as a drug? Uh, I don't know if it's a drug, but apparently nicotine is addictive. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that, that's the addictive part within, within a cigarette. N nic nicotine is addictive. Uh -huh. And that's uh, what... what and, no. that, and that's what keeps a smoker coming back. Yeah. I think it's this, that a smoker feels relaxed after smoke, smoking, although it's very temporary, uh -huh. feeling relaxed. But that feeling of being relaxed is pleasurable. Mm -hmm. So the, f the brain forms an association. Whenever you smoke a cigarette, you will feel a bit of relaxation. Although it's two minutes, there's an association. So every time you're, you're stressed, yeah. you're angry, you're cut off on the road, uh, at home, there's a problem, you get a, a nasty phone call, whatever it is that stresses you out, your brain says, remember the cigarette? That brought you a bit of relaxation. Immediately you begin to crave it. Yeah. You go back to smoking. Yes. So the the body begins to form an associate the body begins to form you know a relationship mm -hmm. with that behavior because it brought it relaxation yes it brought it temporary pleasure so this is basically how addictions work mm -hmm.
but does this mean that once a person is addicted to drugs or cigarettes you know addictions are, are of different forms yeah some people are addicted to smoking obviously and that's why they're smokers and whatever you tell them this will cause you heart disease cancer you might die you're not only hurting yourself but you're hurting people you around you, you. Yeah. Uh, you're you're wasting money especially in the West where there's a big tax 90% 90% tax on on cigarettes so you're wasting a lot of money but it's an addiction yeah Carlos his body is telling him that you need it his, his brain is telling him that this is your temporary happiness don't let anyone take it away from you so they're willing to sacrifice there's some people that are addicted to, to drugs. There's some people that are addicted to alcohol. Because alcohol, alcohol so. makes you drunk, makes you intoxicated. And intoxication, apparently, you know, for, for some people, well, it's, anything it's, it's that you overdose in becomes something negative. Right. For me, I think I, I, if you overdose on water, it's... it's but like, water is not addictive. It's, it's not addictive, but you're right. But I mean, I, anything that, you know, you pass... The water is healthy. The more you drink water, the, bo the bo body needs water. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned something interesting, social media. There are some people that are addicted to social media yeah. or their iPhones. And we talked about this. There are some people every couple of minutes they have to check. That's a form of addiction. Why? Because checking keeps them entertained. Uh, they get a message, makes them laugh. It makes them, you know, it could be gossip. It could be whatever. So again, the, f the brain forms an, an attachment. There's an association. Open your phone, you'll see something nice. Open, open your phone, you'll be entertained. Mm -hmm. So the, the body gets used to opening the phone. The mind keeps on telling you, open your phone. That's mm -hmm. how the addiction works. There are some people that are addicted to certain sexual behaviors. Yeah. Whether it's with someone else or by themselves. That's a, a sexual behavior. Yeah. That is addictive yeah. for some. And uh, for some, it is very difficult to stop that behavior. It is indeed very di addictive. Mm -hmm. So addictions can come in, in various forms. There are some people that are addicted to a, a, sort, a kind of food. Addiction to chocolate, for example. Chocolate has components that are, uh, you know, they uplift someone's feeling sad mm -hmm. immediately when they have chocolate it, mm -hmm. it soothes the pain mm -hmm. so to speak um, speaking of chocolate I'm not I, making you know any adver advertisement for Cadbury or, no, or no, Nestle no. or anything else our, our, our manager Shad Khaqani he's addicted to this chocolate I see and you're not going to get fired after the show hopefully nothing are they else saying this? Oh. just chocolate <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are some people that are addicted to drinks Coca-Cola yeah so uh, soda drinks. drinks, soft yeah. drinks. They have caffeine. Yeah. Coffee, coffee and tea. I'm addicted to coffee and tea. Because it has caffeine. Yeah. And caffeine is addictive. I, th I think that's a good addiction. Yeah, we'll it, talk about that later. Are right. addictions good or bad? Are yeah. there good addictions yeah. or, or addictions always bad? That's one of the questions we actually just got on, on Facebook. Right. Are there any good or bad addictions? Right. So, um, so tea is addictive. See. Caffeine is addictive. There are some people who, if they don't drink tea, they'll get a headache. Yeah. It's withdrawal. Because they haven't drank tea, they'll get a headache. Yeah. And that's, that's a common feeling. That's how bo the body reacts to withdrawing from an addiction. It gets a headache. You might feel grouchy. You might feel moody. You can't sleep. Mm -hmm. Loss of sleep after withdrawing from something that is addictive. Anyhow... Coming back to your question, Ahmed, mm -hmm. is it possible to overcome addictions? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. According to science and according to religion. Is it easy? No. It's not easy. It's relative. For some people, it could be easy. For some people, it's not easy. But it's very much possible to overcome an addiction. There are some people that smoked for 60 years. And then all of a sudden they stopped. As they say, cold turkey. Mm -hmm. Cold turkey, they stopped. Uh, some people were alcoholics. And they went into, uh, you know, those programs that they have in the West. Yeah, the uh, rehabs. And rehabs stuff. and all. And they stopped. 
They stopped alcohol. Drugs. Maybe it's a sexual behavior. Maybe it's an addiction to caffeine. I've heard some people that say, you know, I, I used to drink tea all the time or coffee all the time, but I stopped. It's very much possible scientifically mm -hmm. to overcome an addiction. The body won't die. Mm -hmm. You could be a smoker that sp smokes two packs a day of cigarettes and you quit all of a sudden. It's not like you'll die. Yes, it'll be very difficult. Mm -hmm. Loss of appetite, mm -hmm. loss of sleep maybe, fatigue, feeling fatigue, feeling tired, all of that. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you can get adjusted. So mm -hmm. scientifically, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll talk about ways to overcome addictions. Mm -hmm. What helps in overcoming addictions. Mm -hmm. Religiously, absolutely. In fact, Islam teaches us to overcome addic addictions. Mm -hmm. why, is, why does Quran encourage Tawbah? Tawbah is repentance, forgiveness. From what? From sins that we're addicted to from sins that we can't stop. You know, there are sim some sins that are addictive, like ghiba. Yeah. Ghiba is addictive. Backbiting. Backbiting. There's some people that cannot control their tongues. I, I know a few people who really Although they stop. try and they say yeah. enough, Wallah, I, I'm done, <laughs> I don't want to backbite, I don't want to say anything, but they can't, it's addictive. They do it once, it's pleasurable. You know, there's a saying in Arabic that says ghiba is the is the fruit of the majlis. You know, in Middle Eastern culture, when you have guests, you bring fruits to make, to make it a lively mm -hmm. uh, setting and, mm -hmm. you know, a way to honor your guest. Yeah. Unfortunately, some people, they don't bring fruits. They bring ghiba. They enjoy ghiba with their friends. It's addictive. You can't stop because you find pleasure in it. SubhanAllah, I don't know why it's pleasurable. Mm -hmm. Ghiba has some, for, some sort of mm -hmm. pleasure, gossip. Mm -hmm. So some people are addicted. That is why we have Tawbah. The door of Tawbah is open. That is proof that it is overcome. To, it mm -hmm. is, we, we are able to overcome mm -hmm. addiction. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin. Hatta yugayyiru ma bi anfusin. Allah will not change a group of people unless they change themselves. themselves. Now, Sayyidina, getting a bit personal, have you been addicted or are you addicted to something? I am addicted to Imam Hussein TV. <laughs> Allah. You I very much enjoy coming to this channel and I'm addicted to my presenter. I refuse to have any other presenter. So does that count? I, I mean, uh, let's, let's see what the control have to say about that. Um, but I mean, let's take it as a, as a no answer instead of you know, trying to avoid the answer. Um, anyways, uh, but yes, speaking of you know, religious um, uh, ways of you know, overcoming uh, addictions, um, a lot of people do say that uh, fasting, uh, if an individual, you know, that uh, is, uh, you know, addicted to a lot of things, and you mentioned sins. Now, I don't want to get to solutions uh, just yet, uh, but you mentioned sins. Now, is smoking a sin? Is it considered a sin, smoking cigarettes? Smoking cigarettes is... Um, uh there is various opinions. Mm -hmm. According to most scholars, it's not. But there are some that do believe it is haram. There are some scholars that believe, that they say the following, that if you believe smoking can, can seriously damage your health to the point of death, then it is haram because, because it becomes a form of suicide. Yes. And the Quran says, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَا تَهْلُكَ So if you smoke a pack or more a day, and you know that this is that this will cause your death either through cancer or heart disease or whatever then it becomes haram but if you don't believe that it's that harmful if you're not a heavy smoker if you smoke two three cigarettes a day or two three cigarettes a week what's the point of, of doing it i don't know i don't i don't, I don't but know. if if you smoke to a degree that is not harmful you don't think will be that harmful some scholars say then it is mm -hmm. not, uh, it is not haram. The majority of scholars don't 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 believe that uh, smoking is haram. Mm -hmm. But does it mean that we should continue? Does that mean that should a person smoke? No. Even if it's not haram, at least it's it's not good for for your health. Mm -hmm. If it's not going to cause you 
cancer, but it will get you tired. It can, you know, it could still hurt you. It'll make you tired. You can't exercise. You can't walk fast. You can't run. You can't, right? It still damages. Yes. And it'll, it'll do damage to your family members as well. Mm -hmm. So not everything that is halal or not haram should, uh, should be done. Mm -hmm. To answer your question on smoking. Yes. Um, now, Al Hussam Ali from uh, Edmonton, Canada, he says most of the addictions uh, come from the people you hang out with. Uh, if they are, uh, if they have a bad influence on you, then you must cut the ties with them uh, or try to influence them. Now, unfortunately, <coughs> some people pick up addictions from friends. Yeah. For example, drugs. Mm -hmm. I doubt that a person, you know, uh, he watches a movie and he sees actors taking drugs and he says, you know what, let me go and try drugs. Or he reads about drugs on the internet and he says, let me try drugs. Usually, it's because of peer pressure. Yeah. He's with his friends and he sees his friends doing it and they tell him it's so amazing and it's good and uh, it's not harmful whatsoever and just do it once. And there's peer pressure. He'll do it once and again and again and every time they get together until it becomes a formal addiction. Even cigarettes. The people who smoked for the first time, I'm sure it's not because they saw it on TV and they decided to go and smoke. Usually it's because of a friend. Yeah, or, or Usually a friend around. offered once, twice, three times until you finally accepted and you found it pleasure, pleasurable. Or you might not even find it pleasurable because your friends are doing it yeah. and it's cool. Or they tell you, you know, don't be a baby, just do it, you know, don't be a prude or whatever. Yeah. And they do it. Slowly, slowly, it becomes an addiction. Mm -hmm. So indeed, I agree that peer pressure... Uh, a lot of addictions can start from peer pressure. Yes, Absolutely. a lot of them. Especially in the cases of alcohol, drugs, and uh, cigarettes. Uh -huh. Now, one of, uh, you know, just to go back just a little bit, uh, you did mention that, uh, you know, according today, we're talking about cigarettes a lot. A lot of people are addicted to music, which we shall get to talk about tomorrow, inshallah. Mm. Uh, they're, they're addicted to, to, to music and, you know, they can't relax right. and, until they, you know, hear a beat or yeah, you know, exactly. hear that drum within their ear. That's also an addiction. That's also an addiction. Why? It's because of the association that we've talked about. Yes. Maybe they were feeling sad. They listened to a song. It cheered them up. The, f the brain formed an association between listening to a song and cheering up. Mm -hmm. So the brain will always remember that. So whenever it uh, hears similar beats, it'll want to listen to it because it'll go back to that association. That listening to music cheered you up. Mm -hmm. So you want to do it again and again and again to feel cheered. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, it's, uh, it's an addiction. And tomorrow night we'll talk about you know, the harms of music mm -hmm. and the, the pros of music and try to weigh them out mm -hmm. and see why does Islam say that music should be avoided. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people, when you do get to um, to know them for the first time, uh, people are addicted to, as you mentioned, gossip. But people are addicted to never sit at home. You know, to always be out. Now, is this a good or a bad addiction? I know after the break we have a couple of minutes, uh, but just to introduce it so we can continue it after the break. Right. But you know, th this, this is very simple. Right. That is an addiction. For example, shopping. Yeah. Some people are addicted to shopping. Um, maybe some people are addicted to going to museums and uh, art galleries. I think that th that's a good addiction, though. Uh, some young men are addicted to shisha smoking. Of mm -hmm. course, that's a category of, yeah. of smoking. But some people don't smoke cigarettes, but they're addicted to, sh to shisha smoking. They have to, have, they have to go to a cafe, have a friend who has to go a to a cafe every night. I tell them why every night to a shisha cafe. You know how bad that is for your health? One shisha is equivalent to God knows how many cigarettes. Is, is it true? It's very heavy. Yeah. Is it true? Yeah, absolutely. Read about it scientifically. The amount that you inhale from a shisha is, is, is a lot more than mm -hmm. cigarettes. What about vapes, Shane? There's the new trend of vape. You know, the, the, the vaporizers, the vapes. What about it? You mean halal or haram? Uh, not halal or haram, but, but you know... Is it uh, for me? Is it harmful? In a way. And is some it smoke or 
Uh, it's vape. It's 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 vapor. It, like it's it's you know right. something that is vaporized. So is it harmful? And, and harmful or is it not harmful? What do scientists say? Yeah, and if, well, it, it depends. I mean, the brand that that you buy right. your vape from. But no, again, no. it's the same answer. Yeah. What scholars would say, if it's dangerous and harmful to the point that it could lead to death, you know that it could lead to death. It's not allowed. Mm -hmm. But if it's you know, it's not that harmful. It's just as harmful as eating too much or it won't kill let's say if it doesn't kill then mm -hmm. most scholars would not say that it's haram. Mm -hmm. now before we go into a break uh, i want to mention something that uh, a lot of people when that are addicted to something and you tell them why you're addicted to this or why addicted to that uh, they give the lamest answer you can ever hear they say well they make excuses yolo you only live once so why not you know try whatever we want Right. You know, as long as it's, you know, some people don't even care as long as it's from the bunch of religion. But they say that, you know, YOLO, I want to try whatever is out there so I can, yeah, this is my body. I can do whatever I want to. Well, this is good. Uh, it's good. No, I mean, comp relatively compared to those who try to make even worse justifications. Uh -huh. uh, this is not good, but I'm saying relatively uh -huh. to those that, you know, they're in denial. You tell them why you're addicted to cigarettes. They say, I'm not addicted. Who told you I'm addicted? I could stop right now. But they continue smoking for another 20 years. There's some people that are in denial. Yeah. They're offended when you tell them that you're, you're addicted. Yeah. Or there are some that will flat out tell you who, tells, who, who said smoking cigarettes is uh, harmful. They'll twist it. Who said smoking is harmful? Then why does it say on the pack the main, the, the main cause? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, they say it could cause cancer. It doesn't say that it will definitely cause cancer. Or people that are addicted to, al addicted to alcohol. So what? Who said alcohol's uh, addictive? Uh, who said it's harmful? It's just like drinking water. So on and so forth. They're in denial. Yeah. And although they do know that it's destructive, it's harmful to the health, they'll flat out tell you it's not. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, are they just trying to fool others? Or are they trying to fool themselves? Are they trying to fool themselves? Yeah. I highly doubt that... They can fool themselves. Yeah. Maybe they could fool others, but they can't fool themselves, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And some actually say now are addicted uh, to doing good things, uh, which the break is all about now. Uh, the blood drive, which happened in London, uh, where people gathered to donate blood for the sake of Imam Hussein on his auspicious occasion. Now, this thing is really addictive uh, for the people that you know that initiate it and put hard work to it. Every year or every season they have to do this. Uh, so respected viewers, do stay tuned for after the break for you will inshallah be presented with a short report from a blood drive donation from London, UK. After that, we'll talk about overcoming addictions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mubaraki on this auspicious occasion of uh, the birth of our holy Imam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, giving great pleasure in donating blood in the name of our holy Imam. Um, and I'd recommend it to you all do something today, donate blood if you can. Asantum. of the birth of Ma'a Hussain alayhi salam. We are donating blood today on this event and we encourage everyone to do so. Assalamu alaikum ya Sayyidi Mawla ya Abu Abdullah al Hussein. I would like to congratulate the Muslim Ummah on this beautiful day, the Milad of Imam Hussein and Milad of Al Fulla Abbas and uh, Imam Sajjad. Um, obviously, Imam Hussein is Imam al Hayat, Imam al Giving, Imam of Life. He's the one who gave everything for the sake of humanity. So today we are giving our blood uh, in a good cause, inshallah. 
and uh, to represent who we stand for, Imam Hussein, and for what he stood for, inshallah, is what we're giving today, inshallah. And it's a small thing that we can do for the khidmat of Imam Hussein. <laughs> الرحيم والله الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب قلوب العالمين أبي القاسم مصطفى محمد الله صل على محمد وعلى محمد. I would like to congratulate all brothers and sisters in this amazing celebration and it's the birth of Imam Hussein. It's a great day. We've all come into the blood donor center and we've given blood in the name of Imam Hussein. We ask from Imam Hussein and Allah to accept it from us and I send all the best wishes to all friends and family. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam for once again granting us the opportunity to serve them and to serve humanity as a whole. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers for this event and also to thank the staff who have dedicated their time to this blood donation in the center here. Everyone's doing a very excellent job. The reason we're doing this is because of the birthday of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We share our blood to make a point that Imam Hussein, he was the Imam of the life. He sacrificed his life for the sake of humanity. We're here today to stand and show our solidarity and to show our stand and cooperation with the brothers here who have organized this blood donation session. <laughs> Respected viewers, brothers and sisters, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the second part of today's episode. Now, before the break, uh, we began our discussion around uh, being addicted. And one of the addictions of Sayyid Hassan Qazwini is being addicted to be presented <laughs> by me, Sayyid welcome back uh, to our show. Thank you. Uh, Allah khalikum. I know you love these personal questions uh, and you want more, uh, but uh, we'll kick it off uh, with a comment. Uh, from uh, a brother named Ali Rola from Sudbury, Ontario, uh, very close where I used to live. Uh, he says, I really like today's topic, not saying that the other topics weren't nice, but I can relate to, my, uh, to this discussion very much. Three years ago, I was addicted to cigarettes and I tried so many things from pharmacies and non-nicotine uh, cigs, but the way that really worked for me is that I kept on motivating myself and brought uh, toothpicks and mm. use them instead of six. Mm. Hopefully, he didn't smoke the toothpicks, but... No, uh, no, that's, that's yeah, yeah, very yeah. good. That's yeah, very yeah. good. And uh, it's been three years since I had my last sig. Hope this works for the rest of the smokers who want to quit. Uh, now, this is, this is a very uh, nice solution for someone who wants to quit smoking. Um, and we do thank you, uh, Brother Ali Rada uh, from Sudbury, Ontario. Now, this is, you know, being initiative, you know, taking the initiative of, you know, something that no one does, you do, um, one of the ways, you know, but trying pharmacies uh, and non-nicotine cigs probably doesn't work. Um, so, Sayyidina, the second part of today's episode, or the second half uh, of, of the show, we want to talk about how do we overcome addictions. Now, at the first part, we said, is it possible to overcome addictions? 
Now, how can we overcome addictions? Hassan. Bismillah ar um, we, we reached this conclusion that it's very much possible to, co to overcome mm -hmm. an addiction, scientifically and religiously. I think the first step for um, anyone who wants to stop an addiction and overcome an addiction, and as we said, addictions are of are various types. So um, for our dear viewers, if you're not a smoker, it doesn't mean that this won't apply to you. No, because addictions are of various types. It could be, you could be addicted to smoking or drugs or alcohol. And of course, I don't mean to put them all in one category yeah. because drugs and alcohol they're, are haram. They're severe. Smoking or not yeah. is not haram in, in the opinion of many scholars. Mm -hmm. But it's nevertheless an addiction mm -hmm. that many people want to stop. It could be a sexual behavior. Mm -hmm. It could be a sexual act that, that is addictive. It could be an addiction to social media. It could be an addiction to shopping. It could be a, an addiction to a specific type of food or a, a behavior. For example, uh, you know, it's interesting. You asked me, are you addicted to something? Cracking your nails. There's, there's people who are... That are I crack my nail, my, my thumbs, but my, like my fingers, but not like yeah, that. Yeah, there's people. I I ha I have this problem of cracking nails, and I know that, that it's it's not very healthy. And I've been told it could cause arthritis. And yeah, it's an addiction, right? Uh, but you know, addictions are are different. There are some addictions that are not a big deal. There are some addictions that could kill you. There are some addiction uh, addictions that won't kill you, but could could drive you to hellfire. Mm -hmm. Jahannam. So how do we overcome addictions? Number one, the number one law is to acknowledge you have a problem. Yes. Is to acknowledge that you have an addiction. There's some, there's some people that won't acknowledge. You cannot find a, a solution and a problem if you don't acknowledge that you're ill. Yeah. If a person does not know that he has cancer, is he going to go seek treatment for cancer? Definitely. No. If a person does not acknowledge that he has a, you know, an illness, he's not going to seek a cure. So number one, you have to admit that you have an addiction. And it's a problem. It's not something that you enjoy and you do once in a while. No, it's a problem that you can't stop. Mm -hmm. You've tried. People have told you to stop. You've told yourself to stop, you've made a decision, or you've wanted to stop, but you can't. That is called an addiction. We have to call it as such. You can't fool yourself and say, no, I could quit whenever I want. This is not a big deal. It's not a, it is an addiction. Mm -hmm. And you have to admit that you're addicted. This is one. This is the first step. Because if you don't admit, you're not going to seek help. You're not going to go to step two, step three, step four. That's the first step is to say, yes, I am addicted and I need help. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to go to a person. Even if you admit to yourself, even if you admit to yourself that you are addicted, that's the first step. Mm -hmm. This is one. Two, you need to develop a strong will and a determination. Don't fool yourself. If you really want to stop, you have, to, you have to be determined. You have to have a strong will. Not a weak will that, you know, uh, you say, yeah, yeah, inshallah, uh, I'm going to stop. No. You can't fool yourself. If you really want to overcome an addiction, you say, khalas, tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow is a new, new beginning. I'm going to put cigarettes behind. I'm going to put this problem behind me. Mm -hmm this sexual act, this addiction to, to something, or mm -hmm. I will put it behind me. Now, so you have to, you know, make a firm yeah. decision. That's step number mm -hmm. two. Yes. You, you, you too Go ahead. Uh, motivate you. Uh, but uh, Hamid Amiri, he says there's a new addiction. How about being addicted to love? How do you overcome this? How do you overcome being addicted uh, to love? Can you be addicted to love? Yeah, you could. Uh -huh. What uh, kind of love? Um, since you're a specialist of love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, addicted to love. I assume this person is speaking about worldly love, you know, love for someone. Mm -hmm. Why? It's, uh, it makes perfect sense because feeling in love gives you pleasure. Yes. 
You're being loved. You're wanted. That's so pleasure. Association. We're back to association. You're, we're back to association of the brain. So that person breaks up with you. Or that person no longer wants you. So that sense of pleasure that you gained from being in love, you want it back. So you find someone and immediately you profess your love. I love you. Even though you might not really love that person. But you want that sense, that you want that feeling again of being loved and showing love to someone where you had with person number one. You want it with person number two. You want it with person... You formed an attachment. Wow, well, person number two and three. Oh. Yeah. If, if, that, if you keep on getting into breakups, yeah. you'll always be in search of love. Mm -hmm. It's an emotional attachment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. It could be an addiction. In fact, you could be addicted to a person. You could be addicted to a person. Yeah. If you feel this person, it, it's, it's not love, really. Uh, it's an addiction. If that person makes you feel good, flatters you, tells you the things that you only want to hear, never tells you things that you don't want to hear, you'll be addicted mm -hmm. to this person. We have two people, uh, you know, from the cameraman. We have uh, Hassan Alaq and Salmad who are, you know, two addicted to each other. Right. Uh, they, if you see one, you have to see the other one with them. <laughs> Especially the one on the crane right now, he's addicted to all three of them. Right. You know what I mean? I'm assuming so, you're going to be in trouble after this show, so good luck with that. So yeah, I'm leaving so, right away. But yeah, speaking of you know being right, addicted to someone, absolutely. When you see if so they, this one, yeah, you have to if see they the make one you one. feel good, yeah, uh, and happy, you're you're going to want them all the time. Mm -hmm. You feel addicted to them. So number one, admit the problem. Number two, develop a strong will and a sense of resistance. Mm -hmm and determination. You have to. It's like being attacked by someone. You, know, you, you put your guards up right away, you yeah. resist. That's a form of resistance we have to have with addictions. Yeah. When someone jumps on you, you don't just sit there and say, yeah, go ahead, take a, <laughs> take a punch. No, you resist. It's, natural, it's a natural reaction. Someone jumps at you, whether it's an animal or a, or a human or a gang or whatever, you resist, you fight it off. That's the picture that we have to have our, in our head when it comes to addictions. If you want to really get over it. If you're fooling yourself, that's, that's another issue. Mm -hmm. um, number can we, three. Can we just read this comment and then yeah, we can absolutely. go to number three? Absolutely. Uh, keep that in mind. Now, Jafar Hamoud from Florida, he says, I'm a specialist in a rehab and I get asked this question a lot. Uh, what's the best way to quit smoking and how do I put an end to my addictions? Now, to be honest, the best way to fill, the best ways to fill your time with useful things, uh, like playing sports or nice walks early in the morning, positive social interactions can stimulate the release of neurochemicals, which brings out the feelings of happiness and satisfaction without the need of drugs. Ah, sent. Good. That th I will talk about that in number four. Uh huh. Okay. I will talk about that. But I think this is we thank you, Jafar Hamoud, for that. Number three, mm -hmm. in order to overcome addictions, avoid triggers. Avoid triggers. What is it that triggers you to want that act or behavior? Mm -hmm. For example, what triggers you to smoke? Stress, anger, uh, a crazy driver on the road that cuts you off? Uh, is it your kids? Is it a boss? Things that cause you stress? And the need and desire for what? To smoke. Mm -hmm. Avoid those triggers. Avoid those triggers. Mm -hmm. To the best of your ability. You might be saying, well, say, what, what do you want me to do? Go live, on, go live on the moon? Wherever I live, there's stress. Mm -hmm. True. True. But there's a lot that you could avoid and reduce. For example, uh, if it's driving on the highway and someone cuts you off, don't take the highway. Take the streets. It's a, it's a possibility. For some, for example, it's a billboard. A billboard could trigger them. It, it's an advertisement for, for cigarettes. Or, nastajiru billah, it's a billboard of a you know, half-naked female. It mm -hmm. triggers uh, yeah. a desire for a sexual behavior, a sexual act. Mm -hmm. Don't take that street. Avoid those, avoid those triggers. What if you work on that street? You change your work. <laughs> my, 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 you know, my point is we could avoid triggers. Yeah. 
if it's friends for example you're you're fine if you're at work you don't need to smoke if you're at home you don't need to smoke but as soon as your friends come over or you go over your friends because they smoke you're gonna want to smoke mm -hmm. avoid those friends yes you have the to avoid those comment friends. we had in, in, in our first break yeah right? if it's music you're addicted to music but what triggers it is when you're with friends when you're in the car you turn it on avoid avoid those friends avoid certain places this is one of the keys there are certain things that trigger they trigger the 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 addiction you can start by avoiding those triggers mm -hmm. number four find a replacement mm -hmm. and uh, the brother that yes brother Ja'far Hamoud Ja'far Hamoud and I think this was this is what what he was trying to say finding a replacement yes go for exercise go for something lawful go mm -hmm. for something halal it'll, it'll give off those chemicals of the, happiness the, the neurochemicals the neurochemicals of, of happiness the same chemicals that go off when performing the, addi the addicted act b addicted behavior you can get those chemicals but from another behavior but from another act it's possible you have to find a, a replacement for example the, you know the brother that messaged us first mm -hmm. for smoking his replacement was toothpicks that's genius. That's genius because it kept him busy. See, the mind will yes. play tricks on us. The mind will constantly say, smoke, smoke, smoke. Do this, do this, do... You know, whatever the behavior it is, whatever the sexual... It's a sexual behavior, it's addiction to social media, it's whatever it is, mm -hmm. the brain keeps on saying, do it, do it, do it. Keep on... Do oh. You have to keep the mind busy and the body busy. So it's a... Is it a toothpick? Is it a sibha that you have in your hand and you, you keep yourself busy with? Is it talking on the phone? Is it those nicotine patches? Whatever it is, you find a replacement. If you're addicted to music, for example, you find a replacement. You listen to anashid, for example. It's not music. It doesn't have beats. It doesn't have <laughs> m uh, musical instruments. There's a nice voice. 21st century anashid. Right, are, right. Are, are worse than Right, the that's music. why I say avoid those ones yeah. and go for the lawful anashid. It's a form of replacement. Your ears want to listen to something. Provide, uh, provide a, uh, a replacement. Social media. Social media is entertaining. You're, you're talking to someone. You're chatting to someone. Instead, put your, phone, put your phone away. Speak to someone in person. If social media is giving you pleasure because you're chatting, you're texting, you're speaking to someone, Speak to someone in person. You have to find a replacement. Otherwise, the addiction will come back to its, uh, you know, you'll stop a day or two or three, and then you'll come back. You have to keep your mind busy. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep your, your, your body busy as well. Mm -hmm. And finally, number four, ask Allah Azza wa Jal for help. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will not abandon us. Mm -hmm. Whatever the addiction that you have, especially if it's an unlawful addiction. If especially if it's an addiction that Allah is not pleased with. Yes. And Allah dis dislikes. You make an effort. You, you admit what the problem is. You confront yourself. You avoid the triggers. You find a replacement. You do what you have to do. And at the same time, finally, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. You tell Him, Oh Allah, I'm doing my best that I can. And Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin. Yes. Once Allah sees that you've made a struggle, you've made an effort to give up that addiction, whatever that addiction is, He will put the final touches. And He will assist us in overcoming that addiction. So asking Allah for help and the Ahlul Bayt for, for their intercession will also definitely help in overcoming those uh, addictions. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one of uh, the comments that we got is from uh, Faiz Zazada from the UK who says uh, motivation is key to overcoming. O always motivate yourself to overcome uh, your addictions. You know, motivate right. yourself by your friends, by your family members. Uh, you know, just keep a motivated company around you. Um, uh, you know, a good way, I think, and that's interesting, mm -hmm. is to read about those who overcame addictions. 
For example, if you would like to overcome smoking, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, maybe the dear viewers are saying, why this overemphasis on smoking, especially if you're saying it's not haram. I'm using smoking as an example. An example. It's, a, it's a major yeah. example of addictions. Otherwise, addictions are many. For example, if you want to stop smoking, uh, if you know a person who's, who, who used to smoke and stop, go and ask him how. That's a good way to be motivated. And remind yourself of that person. See? S s tell yourself every day. See? Mr. So-and-so did it. Mr. So-and-so used to smoke maybe more than you. But he stopped. That means you could do it. Read about people. Read about people's experiences. Look it up online. There's so many stories. Maybe in your community. Maybe, maybe in your family. There are people that were able to overcome addictions. We could be motivated by their stories. Yes. Um, another comment that we had. This is a um, very tough name to say. Can Kenny Zane? Kenny Zane, uh, Abdul Fadl. Uh, she says, "Salam." At times, people who go through tough times in their life tend to get addicted to thinking about the problems in a way where it leads them to severe depression and anxiety problems, leading to health complications. Please explain how to stop taking stress and uh, deriving our attention to Allah or in other words to tawakkul um, that's, that's a very good point overthinking mm -hmm. is an addiction yeah. when you overthink something to the point that it causes uh, depression it could be something small but you overthink it and you begin to exaggerate in your mind, it's all in the head yeah it's all in the head. No one needs a no lot of needs. problems come because of that. Exactly. Or, or uh, for example, for example, you think of uh, you overthink too much. You have a problem of overthinking. So, for example, you think of getting arrested. Mm -hmm. You say, if I get arrested, I go to jail. If I go to jail, I won't see my family members. If I don't see my family members, my children will grow up and I don't see them, or I'll never get married, or there, something might happen to my mom. Or what, and if my mom dies, what's, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my father? You keep on overthinking, overthinking, overthinking until you finally you collapse. You become so stressed, you collapse. The key to overthinking is to stop it in the beginning, mm -hmm. right away. Whatever the trigger is, there are, there's triggers to overthinking. Yes. For example, uh, you see, you hear of a person with a similar problem. So you begin to remember your own problem. and you, From the beginning, stop. Stop yourself. Say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to think about this. Let me think about, for example, Imam Hussein Anissa. Let me think about Abu Fadl Abu. Let me think about the weather. Keep yourself busy immediately. Pick up the phone. Talk to a friend. Talk to a family member. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with seeking professional help. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with seeking professional help. If all the things that we've mentioned, they worked, good. If they didn't work, addiction is a psychological problem. It is. Some psychological problems are easy to overcome. Some psychological problems are very difficult to overcome. Mm -hmm. Depression. Depression is a psychological problem. But well, it has... Severe. It could be very I mean, severe yeah. to the point that it could, you know, it you could become suicidal. suicidal yeah. Or, you know, it could be not so severe and you could overcome if it's at a if you're at a severe stage you have to seek professional help there's nothing wrong with that yes just like we go to a doctor when i feel pain in my stomach or my throat or whatever i have an infection in my throat i go to i go seek professional help mm -hmm. there's no shame in that yeah psychological disorders also deserve professional help go to a professional go to a psychiatrist go to a psychologist and tell them listen i've tried mm -hmm. to overcome these addictions but it's not working. Help me. Teach me. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And Sayyidina, just to uh, end our show, I think we have two minutes left. A lot of people tend to get addicted. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we said we have good addictions and bad addictions. Some people are addicted uh, to good things. Which, but the thing is that, that, that they, you know, they just do it excessively right where it gets to the point where you know it's it's right it's irregular it, um see it could be addictions to good things for example salah or mm -hmm. wudu it could be a form of an ocd 
mm -hmm. uh, an obsessive compulsive disorder, a person that repeats his salah all the time, is addicted to repeating his salah, that's an OCD. Islam doesn't want you to repeat your salah 50 times. Islam wants you to pray once. One morning prayer, one noon, one afternoon, one maghrib, one asha. Don't over-repeat it. No, there's some that, you know, uh, they're addicted to salah and that not repeat, but they like to perform salah all the time. They feel compelled. Yeah. You shouldn't feel compelled. You know, uh, worship is meant to be enjoyed, just like food. Food is nourishment for the body. Yes. It's meant to be enjoyed. So is ibadah and worship. It's meant to be enjoyed. It's not meant to create havoc in your life and stress and you have to do it because addictions are sometimes out of control. You've, they take control over you. You feel like, you know, it's, it's not in your hands. That shouldn't be when it comes to good deeds. It should be in, with control. You want to do it. It's not because you have to, it's because you want to. Mm -hmm. It'll be more enjoyable and more rewarding. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be to the point that you, you feel compelled to pray because you've created some sort of association. So just because you say you're addicted to a good thing, that doesn't mean that that's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. You should want to do a good thing because if it makes you feel good, because you understand what it means, because you can concentrate over it. Mm -hmm. Now, we do thank you very much for joining us tonight, Sayyidna. My pleasure. Uh, hopefully, we can get addicted to good things and keep a limit to that, um, you know, and not go other ways. Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Uh, hopefully, we can continue the discussion tomorrow, but Shalom. around a different topic, Shalom. which is music, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, so, respected viewers, do stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. Uh, for We'll talk about the pros and cons of music, and we'll weigh them out and see which one overweighs the other. That's in tomorrow's discussion. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.